everyone, meet Kevin here. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about the crucial $245 that helped me completely transform this kitchen. And if you haven't guessed yet, this video is going to be about the kitchen cabinetry, which yes, I have made a video in the past about transforming kitchen cabinetry, except the last kitchen that we transformed with this method was not only larger, but the cabinets were built in 2003. So we had much newer cabinetry. Today, we're looking at a kitchen where the cabinets were built in 1959. So we've got a completely different style of wood here and I wanna give you some up close shots at this kind of kitchen, what goes into it, or I guess how little actually goes into it and show you exactly the kind of steps you should take to make this project as simple as possible and which products to use. So uh, I guess let's get started. So on this 3D tour, you can see that when you first came into this kitchen, it had that whole vibe of, you know what, let's tear this kitchen out. But there's a very important rule that I talk about regularly in my property management and rental renovations course or my real estate investing course, but I'll tell you here, and it's the rule of 100. That is the $100 rule says, when you first walk into this kitchen, where can you spend $100 and make absolutely the most impact possible? And then incrementally go up from there. See, unfortunately, when it comes to remodeling, most people do exactly the opposite. They look at a kitchen like this before situation, and the first thought is, uh, let's start swinging the hammer, tearing all of this out, and junking these cabinets because they're crap. That's the impression that people have. And guess what follows after that? Well. Now that we've removed all the cabinets, we may as well redo all the electrical. We may as well redo all the plumbing behind it. You know what? We may as well redo the window right here while we're at it. May as well put in can lights. And you know what? May as well just redo the drywall. And heck, while we're doing all that, why cheap out? Why don't we get the lazy Susan and all the pull-out drawers and let's get a wine cabinet? You know what? Let's get a wine fridge and quite frankly, all of a sudden a little kitchen like this that could have been solved for a $245 difference turns into a $30 or $40,000 project, which is insane. I personally can't bring myself to spend that kind of money. I'd rather go shopping at Ikea and put in a $15,000 kitchen. But even then, it's easy to overspend on all the extra amenities you can get on new kitchen cabinets. Happy Valentine's Day, by the way. The Valentine's Day coupon code does expire today. Remember, because I continue to update and add content to my programs, the price does go up over time. So consider using that coupon code and join now. Okay, now in all fairness, this kitchen project is for a rental property. But just because it's a rental doesn't mean I wouldn't do it in my own house. In fact, this is exactly what I would do in my own house as well, because new kitchen cabinets are nice for like the first two weeks, and then your dishes don't know the difference. There's no difference between a veneered maple cabinet and these original hardwood or plywood cabinets, whatever, who cares, it doesn't matter. There's no difference. They hold your dishes, and as long as they're clean and they open and close, that's all I care about. All right then, Kevin, what are the steps to handling a kitchen like this? How are we gonna transform this kind of kitchen into the beautiful gray looking kitchen that's behind me? And how are we gonna transform it with a $245 difference? Well, the $245 has to do with the kitchen cabinets, and so step number one, Clean everything out, do not start swinging the hammer, remove all the dirt and debris and all the junk and all the cabinetry. After you've cleaned, your next step is to make sure that everything's properly operating. Make sure that the drawers actually open and close appropriately, that the doors open and close appropriately, and any kind of issues, you wanna deal with those first. So slider adjustments on your drawers, any kind of cabinet modifications that you have to do, those are things that you should do now before we get to the color transformation of the cabinets. For example, in this project, you can see that this used to be a wall oven and it is now a built-in microwave and newly added drawer. That work should be completed. These sort of mods should be completed before you do any of the color changing that we did to the cabinets. You'll also see that over here, I went with a range and got rid of the upper cabinets that were here. 
That was another money saving decision because ranges are cheaper than wall ovens and cooktops. Now something else you might actually notice here is that these cabinets over here are actually different from these cabinets. And that's because these are the original cabinets, but because we made this modification with the range over here, we needed to add an 18 inch cabinet. So we ended up picking this cabinet up off the shelf at our local contractor's warehouse, of course, we got it unpainted so that we could go through our paint and staining, which we're gonna talk about shortly. Now, yes, the bevel on this cabinet does not match the design of this cabinet, but quite frankly, unless I point it out, nobody's gonna know the difference. So once we've got cabinets that are cleaned out and once we've made our modifications based on our appliance plans and we've put in the cabinets that we need to adjust and we've done any kind of repairs to cabinets that we need to repair. For example, a good kind of repair is actually one that I missed over here, which is looking for little nicks in the wood that could be filled before painting, look for those nicks and don't make the mistake that I did on that drawer over there. But once you've done that, you are ready for my favorite part, which is starting to color these cabinets. And here's something important to know. Obviously, you wanna remove all of the actual existing hardware. Fortunately, these cabinets already had pre-drilled hardware, which made reinstalling the hardware really easy. I'm not saying it's hard to add hardware to cabinets that don't have hardware. I really like hardware, otherwise, you know, this part of the cabinet gets really grimy and nasty, especially in rentals, and it's painted. So, you know, I wanna increase the longevity here. I'd rather have somebody grabbing this. But anyway, obviously you wanna remove the old hardware, except for the hinges. I personally do not like removing all of the hinges because it increases my work tenfold. Not only do I have to label all of the cabinets and then if you use like a Sharpie, you end up seeing the bleed through. So you usually have to use tape to mark all the cabinets. But if you use tape, guess what ends up happening? The tape ends up blowing off and then you're doing the jigsaw puzzle trying to figure out where all the cabinets belong. And if you accidentally have multiple cabinets with the same size fronts, you might mix them up and then you have doors and cabinets cabinets that don't fit perfectly anymore. Now, I know all of that is solvable with the perfect organization. And I know I might get some comments from going, Kevin, you could just do it easily like this. The right thing to do is remove the hinges. I don't really care about what the perfect answer is. I am looking for the most practical and fast and efficient and beautiful way to finish this for the least amount of money. And that's why I'm calling this the $245 project. And I'll break down the numbers for you in a moment. All right, so cabinets are clean, mods are done, old hardware has been removed, and we've decided to leave the hinges, which yes, that means the hinges are going to be painted. And yes, that means over time, a little bit of the paint's gonna wear off the hinges, whatever. Most tenants don't notice. And if I were living in the house, I wouldn't really care about the darn little hinges. You could always touch them up in time. You know, last time I did a video like this, people were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you would glaze the bathroom. That's only gonna last four to five years. And then I go, wait, really? So I spent $383 glazing the tile around a bathtub surround, maybe another $250 glazing the actual tub itself. And it lasts me three to four years, as opposed to spending six to seven grand now. I'd rather spend less money today go invest that money into buying more rental real estate or buying stocks than to be able to sit around and go, ho, 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 well, I've done a project that's gonna last 20 years. I don't care, I'll just reglaze it. I'll just touch it up. It's, it's not that big of a deal. And this work has proven longevity for me so far. This right here is the primer you wanna use. This is a Zinsser cover stain, stain blocking primer. It's awesome. It says you could top coat within two hours. I never buy that. I always wait a day after applying this. But one of the reasons I really love this kind of primer right here is it's an oil-based primer, which especially the older cabinets, gosh, they need a really good primer, especially if they've been painted before with an older oil-based paint. You gotta put oil over oil. The last thing you wanna do is have some kind of old greasy cabinets or an oil-based cabinet, and then you spray over it with like a Swiss Coffee semi-gloss latex paint without priming it first, you're screwed. 
Somebody's just gonna walk up, nail it, and peel a whole layer of paint right off your cabinet. And that sucks. That's low quality work. That's like Slumlord level. Instead, get yourself a Lovok Zinzer oil-based cover stain. Not sponsored by Zinzer, I've just found this to be amazing. Just make sure when you spray this on, you really clean your sprayer because the oil base, a lot harder to work with, and I also highly, highly recommend anytime you're spraying any kind of paint, you wear the proper P100 aerosol respirator. You gotta make sure you're not using like a toxic dust respirator. It's actually gotta be for aerosols and paints. Now, the other thing is in the picture here, you'll see people rolling it on or brushing it on. For both of the paints that I'm gonna be showing you, I do not recommend you do that. I highly recommend you use an airless sprayer to get this primer on and to get the finish paint on so you can really get that smooth, sleek wood finish on these cabinets, exactly like these cabinets have. You really don't want the texture from rollers. Even if you use little fin nap rollers, you're still gonna get texture. You don't want the lines from brushes. Even if you think you could do a great job with a brush, I hate to say it, you're almost always going to see the brush strokes. I personally think if I can get a quality finish done for a really cheap price, then I'm winning all the way around without sacrificing. And no, I don't think the stupid little hinges are a sacrifice. So a lot of people are under the impression that after you use a really good primer, which honestly, I hate to say it, most people end up cheaping out on the primer, which I think is a terrible mistake. But let's say you did go with a quality primer, you know, a five gallon bucket like this is probably gonna cost 150 bucks. We didn't use all the five gallons because it's just not that much cabinetry here. I think I've used this on two jobs already. But anyway, a lot of people think that, okay, well, if I did use a good primer, I'm just gonna get like a basic paint and primer in one, like semi-gloss enamel, that'll be good enough, and I'll just spray it on. Uh, you know, people will use ultra pure white, they'll use Swiss coffee semi-gloss, or they'll use a gray like this, which we'll talk about that color in a second. But I personally have found these paints to Basically, after they cure for two or three days, they are sticky and they peel off anyway. And that's really frustrating, especially if you open and close the cabinet doors and it kind of tears the paint off with it. And, and again, a lot of that is just not curing long enough, but th there's something to be said about using the correct paints here. I do not think this is the correct paint. And I'm not trying to bag on Home Depot here in the Bear line, I'm a fan of Bear, but uh, don't get this one. Instead, I really recommend you get this. This is the Bare Interior Exterior Urethane Alkaline Semi-Gloss Enamel. Now I know that says semi-gloss enamel and that says semi-gloss enamel as well, but, and I don't know the science behind this, but for some reason this urethane alkaline stuff is really good because it also says for wood, metal, doors, trim, and cabinetry. That right there is the money statement for me. Now in the prior video that I did, I actually mentioned it's not a bad idea to lightly sand or even use a liquid sander on cabinets like this. Well, in this kitchen, we didn't do that. With the exception of a few little rough spots here or there, or greasy spots where we did a little bit of minor touch-up sanding, we didn't sand these cabinets. The reason for that is the primer we used actually doesn't call for sanding. And I know when the label says sticks to all surfaces without sanding and hides dark colors, we look at that and we go, dude, come on, that's advertising. Like, of course we have to sand first. I mean, after all, the paint that we're gonna end up using as our color says, make sure to remove all loose and peeling paint, sand all wood surfaces in the direction of wood grain to desired smoothness. Like we know that's the default instruction, but we didn't do that on these cabinets. We literally just looked for imperfections, minimized those, and then sprayed our primer on. All right, so we've minimized a lot of work on this kitchen, and this particular video, I think, really takes away a lot of extra steps that weren't necessary. Not only are you now able to see a before and after on these older cabinets to show that this system actually works with these older cabinets as well, but I removed the need to sand, with the exception of little touch-up, 
And I'm just making it clear here that you don't actually have to remove the hinges on the cabinetry. Not only does that save you that risk of having to re-puzzle everything, but it also minimizes the chance of you having to make new holes and fill holes, and it just saves you a lot of extra time to just leave the hinges. So now let's talk costs on this remodel. Look, obviously we didn't put in countertops and a faucet and a sink and appliances for $245. But the big part of this project is that decision to realize, whoa, if I can make an old crappy kitchen like that transform into a kitchen like this with a $245 decision, that's pretty good. Obviously go spend money on new countertops if you want or the new appliances or the other little modifications and stuff like that. But here's the thing, this primer behind me is 150 bucks with tax and California recycling fees. And I only used about half of it for this project. So that's only 75 bucks. I also only used about three gallons of this alkali, which by the way is called Coventry Gray. That's the color we used on this project and the color we used on the last project. That means I only spent about $170 in paint for this project. The other $75 I'm using towards covering and tarping the floor, getting cleaning materials for the paint sprayer, and throw in some depreciation for the actual paint sprayer itself. Sometimes you need a new nozzle or this, that, or whatever. So that's how I get to $245 as a transformative decision for your kitchen remodel. So hopefully this inspires you to look at remodeling your kitchen differently. I've now shown you two examples for how you can inexpensively remodel a kitchen by using this primer and this paint instead of swinging the demo hammer. If you want more advice like this, definitely consider joining me in the real estate investing course, the do-it-yourself property management and rental renovations course in one. And of course, subscribe to the channel and follow me on Instagram.